Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and today we're going to talk about the tragic tale of Solon Decius, a loyalist space marine from a traitor legion that would eventually um, just have a terrible ending uh, within the, the Horus Heresy era. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day. If you have any suggestions for characters or topics that you guys would like us to cover, please comment down below. And if you enjoy our content, thank our patrons on Patreon. It is because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. But with that said, let's get into 40 facts on the Space Marine, Solon Decius. Solon Decius was an Adeptus Astarte warrior of the Death Guard Legion that honorably fought for the Imperium during the Great Crusade era but would tragically fall to the forces of chaos during the Horus Heresy. Decius was a member of the 7th Great Company commanded by Battle Captain Nathaniel Garo, and was the youngest member of Captain Garo's command squad. Brother Decius remained loyal to Garo, despite the corruption that had begun to creep into the Space Marine Legions under the War Master Horus's command in the form of Warrior Lodges. Since the beginning, Garo expressed his disapproval of the secretive lodges, and as a result, Decius chose not to join the Warrior Lodge that already existed within the Death Guard when offered membership. During the outset of the Isfan campaign, Garo's 7th Great Company fought in concert with the Emperor's Children Elite First Company against the traitorous forces on the world of Isfan Extremis, the outermost planet in the Isfan system. While fighting against a powerful Slaneshi Psyker known as the Warsinger, Decius' life was saved when Garo pushed the young legionnaire out of the way of its psychic attack which badly wounded the battle captain. Though gravely injured, Garo continued to fight on, fighting back to back amidst the rising tide of enemies until the battle was successfully concluded. As part of Garo's command squad, Decius was fated to be aboard the frigate Eisenstein during the Isfan III atrocity when his commander took control of the vessel and fled the Isfan system through the warp in an attempt to warn of Horus's betrayal to Terra. En route to the throne room, Decius and a number of his fellow Loyalist Death Guard fought a battle against the reanimated corpses of their former traitorous comrades aboard the vessel, who had become the first Plague Marines of Nurgle, when the Plague God's influence had insinuated itself through the damaged Eisenstein's killer field while the vessel was traveling through the Immaterium. During the battle, Decius was injured when he was stabbed by one of the Plague Marines' Plague Knives, and in a vain attempt to halt the advance of the supernatural corruption caused by this chaos artifact, he bravely cut off his own arm. The severely wounded Astarte was then taken to the Apothecarion and put under the care of Apothecary Merrick Voyan, but there was no cure available in the entire corpus of Imperial Medical Science that could ease Decius' suffering. After completing their arduous journey and delivering their message to the Emperor's acting regent, Malkador the Sigilite, Garo and his men were placed under house arrest and held in solitary confinement in the Somnus Citadel on Luna, under the watchful eyes of the Silent Sisterhood. Their fate was yet to be decided. In the meantime, the mortally wounded Decius finally lost his fight to the supernatural disease later known as Nurgle's Rot that was running rampant throughout his rotting flesh. Giving himself over fully to the offer of Nurgle to end his pain, Decius' body was possessed and metamorphosized into a mutated form of the demonic entity known as the Lord of Flies. His twisted body took on a demonic appearance. It possessed an arachnid-like head with numerous eyes and mandibles in place of the mouth, while his decapitated arm grew grotesquely into a great skeletal hand similar to a power fist. The Lord of Flies proceeded to wreak havoc inside the fortress, killing two of his former comrades before Captain Garo strode forth and slew the monstrosity outside the fortress on Luna's bare and airless surface, casting the Lord of Flies' demonic spirit back into the warp from whence it came. Almost nine standard years later, in the final days of the Horus Heresy, just before the start of the Siege of Terra, the Lord of Flies assaulted the mobile industrial platform known as the Walking City on Terra. The demon appeared as a massive horde of plague flies that infected the people of the walking city and transformed them into fly-infested zombies. The knights errant were sent in to defeat the creature. During the battle, the Lord of Flies used the voice of Solon Decius to goad the leader of the knights errant, Nathaniel Garo, promising him that all efforts to stop chaos would be in vain, and offering him a chance to rejoin his fellow Death Guard in service to Nurgle. Decius' voice admitted that he had been consumed by a demon known as the Lord of Flies, and that this was all that was left of him. The Knights Errant succeeded in cleansing the chaos taint from the Walking City, though the Lord of Flies promised he would yet be the death of Garo. 
Later, a force of Chaos cultists struck at the White Mountain, a secret subterranean installation on Terra that was heavily protected against psychic intrusion. The facility was being used to research what had happened to a group of Sisters of Silence who had been captured by the forces of Chaos during the heresy and then recovered by loyalists. In the course of the assault, the Knights of Rand under Garl's command once more moved to defend the facility and were attacked by the Lord of Flies. During the battle, the demon revealed that after he had been defeated by Garo upon Luna, it possessed the body of Merrick Voyan, the apothecary of the Seventy, who had once tried to save Decius upon the Eisenstein after his infection. Voyan had been among the Seventy Death Guard space brains who remained loyal after the Eisenstein arrived on Terra. The demon laughed as Garo realized that he once again would be forced to kill the body of a man who once had been his friend. Garo destroyed the Voyan host body but the demon then moved on to possess the battle brother and former world eater, Macer Varen, and had been mortally wounded during the Battle of the White Mountain. Varen assaulted his comrades, but froze when his fellow battle brother, Garvio Loken, confronted him and tried to remind him of his friendship. Varen's soul regained enough control over his own body to grab a belt of grenades from Loken's armor and set them off. Varen chose to destroy himself rather than let the demon continue to control him. Free of the flesh once more, the demon began to hunt for another host, but Malkador the Sigilite finally entered the battle upon the White Mountain slopes and unleashed his full psychic might against the creature, blasting it to ashes. However, the Sigilite had warned the chapter that like all demons, the Lord of Flies would not be completely destroyed while in real space and would reform within the warp. The Lord of Flies would continue to plague the Imperium, and the memory of Solon Decius as his first victim would go down in the Inquisition's demonic history. And those were 40 facts on Solon Decius. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll probably do not really a part two, but just like a standalone video for the Lord of Flies. Uh, he deserves a video all on his own because he has more history and stuff. Uh, so subscribe to the channel if you want to get that. Any other demon that you guys would like us to talk about, please let me know in the comment section below. Um, but also with this video, I just wanted to like showcase how... Um, Loyalist space marines that came from the Traitor Legion, uh, they still had the call of chaos most of their entire, uh, you know, future careers. Um, and it usually was a very specific type of uh, chaos entity, I guess. So, like, because these guys were Death Guard and because Nurgle knew that the Death Guard were corrupted by him and they pled loyalty specifically to Nurgle, uh, Nurgle and his minions continued to plague the loyalist Death Guard uh, Astartes, who later became Black Shields and then later became their own Space Marine uh, founding chapters. So if you're creating a homebrew chapter and you want to connect yourself to a certain Chaos God to be like your nemesis, um, using a Horus Heresy Battle Brother um, that or fought during the Horus Heresy, but on the Loyalist side uh, against uh, his own legion, uh, and then connecting that rivalry between him and his legion and, and that legion's um, patron chaos god uh, would be a really good idea. So, for example, right now, it's, of course, Nurgle, uh, but you see that all over the place. Um, a lot of Blood Angel successor chapters. Um, I forget the name of the specific successor chapter, um, but they have a rivalry against Corn uh, or demons of Corn who are constantly trying to corrupt that specific Blood Angel successor chapter um, because of like their whole um, red thirst and all that kind of stuff. So if you wanted to do that with Zintra Slash, it's it's easy. You just kind of have to like learn about them, go back and see like well. If I want Slanesh, then maybe Emperor's Children. If I want Zinch, then maybe Thousand Sons. And then just uh, connect it that way and then just have them like every single um, iteration of like a new uh, chapter master. Um, they're they're continuing, continuingly trying to test um, that chapter master to, to make the chapter go traitor and stuff like that. Um, that would be kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, any questions, let me know what you think, uh, and uh, I can't wait to talk to you guys in the comment section. Hope you enjoyed, and, and uh, see you tomorrow. <laughs> this is Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate, signing out.